This is Computer Insider, Canada's award-winning television series with Bob Pritchard. This week on Computer Insider, we meet the people who develop talking technology, an interface which allows the computer to actually understand the spoken word. Later, we'll show you how to find and fix problems on your computer's hard disk. This week on Computer Insider. Computer Insider is brought to you by AST Computer. You'll like the way we work. Sharp Electronics. From sharp minds come sharp products. Thank you very much for joining us again this week on Computer Insider. A rather interesting story has surfaced in the United States. The body of the story itself is rather sickening, but the implications are quite significant. A couple were sentenced in Tennessee for distributing pornography through a BBS system. As I said, the concept of what they were doing was very bad. But what makes this case significant is that they've taken the people to court where the data was received. They were running a bulletin board system in, in California, and the people, the authorities, police in Tennessee, went online and picked up that information from California and then took it to Tennessee where the charges were laid and they were ultimately convicted. What makes it so significant is that if you were to run any sort of information on a BBS system, whether it was pornography or not, and hopefully it wouldn't be, but you could be held responsible for that information. Let's say that you were receiving or sending information from Toronto and that information was picked up in the States and in the States that was against the law you could become subject to whatever the laws and regulations are in that particular state or province. So if you're in the business of moving data around North America, take note because there are some significant changes happening in the laws concerning privacy and regulations. Also, we wanted to let you know that IBM has announced that they're going to put the Apple Macintosh operating system on their computers. Now, it's not going to be for all the boxes. It'll be for their power PC implementations, and that'll take them a year or so to finally get out into the marketplace with the Apple Macintosh operating system installed on top of it. We'll keep you apprised right here on Computer Insider. Computer Insider's Industry Insights has been brought to you by QMS, Seamless Network Printing. One of the problems that many computer companies face is how to come up with the right kind of products to face the marketplace with. After all, computers are becoming larger and faster, smaller and lighter, and a whole bunch of flavors in between. Hewlett Packard has uh, actually been working on trying to fill out their product lines, depending on how you use them or what products you have of theirs, depends on how you see them. For example, if you're a laser printer user, you know about their laser printers, or if you're in the mini computer world, you know about their boxes. But Hewlett Packard has just introduced a new family of color notebook computers. The Omnibook 600 features a full size keyboard, pull out mouse, and weighs 3.8 pounds. The area, though, that we think we focused in particular with the Omnibook 600 is providing uh, to customers for the first time uh, the lightest computing platform with absolutely no compromise in its computing functionality. In fact, this product, even at less than 3.8 pounds, outperforms almost everybody's desktops uh, today. The Omnibook 4000 features stereo sound, trackball, and a 10-inch color display. Both notebooks come with an infrared port for wireless connectivity. Well, first of all, Hewlett Packard pioneered handheld computing. They moved the, the whole concept of instant on, instant access up to a sub notebook, and now they've added a full featured color sub notebook with all of those same features and functions. So, what it does for me is it says that HP really understands the need for instant on, anytime, anyplace computing, and they continue to broaden their line of products to meet that need. HP has a very large base of products, uh, all the way from palm top computing to supercomputers. This fits in right in the middle at this point, uh, filling out uh, and completing our computing platforms uh, in the fastest growing area of computing, mobile computing. Uh, as well, of course, in HP's perspective, uh, we have the broadest, not only the, the deepest, but the broadest line, including peripherals. Uh, those peripherals include uh, printers and scanners, color being a fundamental part of those. This complements that color so it's not just at the desktop, but anywhere you go. The addition of the color notebook completes Hewlett Packard's product lines with computers ranging from handheld to supercomputers. But more importantly, and where it's different from every other machine on the market, is the fact that it's instant on. A user doesn't have to wait for it to boot into Windows. You push the button, it's there, it's ready for use. To be fair about the situation, there are a lot of manufacturers in the marketplace who have a lot of very good products. Hewlett Packard being one of them, and of course IBM's and the Dell's and the AST's and everybody else out there is working to make sure that you have the right kind of products to get the job done that you need to get done with your computer-based technology. 
Speaking about getting things done, we have our fax news service all set for you. It's a fax on demand system, which means you have to have a fax machine somewhere to receive the information. If you want to get our newsletter, all you have to do is call the first number on the screen, that's our fax on demand number, and follow the prompts, the voice prompts we have on the system, and it will fax back to you the information. If you want to drop us a note, that's our fax mailbox, the second number on the screen to tell us what you're doing. Coming up, we're going to be looking at a very interesting technology. It all has to do with speaking on Computer Insider. If you want to attract more business, you've got to work together. We all have our own special visions of where we want to be and how we want to work, wherever we are. At AST, we build computers to meet your worldview with award-winning products, service, and support. From notebooks to super servers, AST Computer. You'll like the way we work. Today's marketplace demands more information delivered faster than ever before. D-Link helps make that happen. D-Link manufactures network interfaces. D-Link connects computer systems with bridges and routers. D-Link writes network management software. D-Link manufactures computer networking and internetworking products to bring this world closer together. D-Link Corporation. When John Nagy joined CopyServe, he was new at computing and an old hand on the mountain. He joined to get more out of his computer and more out of life. On CompuServe, as on the mountain, there was always something to discover. Like the solution to a software problem that wasn't in the manual, or being one of the first to know about that special vacation spot and how to save time and money getting there. The mountain was a source of satisfaction he would never outgrow. In a way, a lot like CompuServe. For more information, call 1-800-554-4088. Start with the basics, news, travel, and encyclopedia, and more for just $8.95 a month. Then go beyond for free software and help with hardware and software problems. You'll get more out of your computer and more out of life. CompuServe, the information service you won't outgrow. It wasn't all that long ago that we used to look at speech technology on the computer as the ability to have the machine execute macros, the ability to put a lot of commands into a single file and have that file start to run by giving it a voice command. Most recently we've seen speech technology that works as a dictation system so we can tell the computer a whole series of words which it then puts into a letter for us or whatever other kind of document we want to work with. Most recently in my car I found out I could get a voice recognition system whereby the computer would actually have meaning to the words that I was giving to it. So I could say dial or call and it would understand that. We took a few minutes and went and found a company called Talking Technology to find out how these systems originate. Historically, the only way of operating these systems was through a touch-tone telephone set. Today, with voice recognition, people can either use touch-tone as an alternative or just speak their commands. This has really expanded the level of service to people who are still on rotary phones. Dad who refuses to put one in place even though it doesn't cost him anymore. People out in the rural areas don't have touchstone service as of yet, particularly as we move out to Western Canada. And it allows that person in the population to still take advantage of systems of our nature. There are two arms. One is where there's just a voice response technology and the other is where we have this uh, call center technology. And the call center technology is uh, really the most exciting and that's where um, we're able to come and provide computer telephony integration uh, at a very low cost. Um, it, on a personal computer platform, we're able to do things now that uh, uh, mainframes and large PBXs uh, were required to do at large investments. So the personal computer is going to do to the PBX uh, in the next five years what uh, it did to the mainframes in the last five years. Um, so you can call up our system, and instead of traditionally pressing one or pressing two, the system will ask you to speak your commands. So you would say one, you might say next, you might say basket if you wanted to quickly jump to another place in the system to start interrogating your quote basket. Uh, we use this technology on our voicemail product. It's particularly useful for hands-free operation if you're in your car. Uh, you can go through your voicemail by saying next, delete, save, 
forward and speaking the extension of the individual that you want to pass the message on to. IVR technology simply turns the telephone into a universal tool of access. Historically, it's been the touch tone input through the keypad of a telephone to access information that's stored in a complex mainframe based uh, computer application. With voice recognition technology, in the last couple of years, we've been able to offer that same service to, to clients or to customers who have rotary dial phones, and that's about 30% of the, the Canadian households. In, in the future, we see the expansion of voice recognition establishing itself to widespread use either at the local workstation level or directly, as we're seeing through announcements from AT&T, so that you talk to the phone company in all aspects of, of your interface over the phone. So you may be aware of commercials advertising the ability to, to uh, place people's names and speak that name back uh, in order to directly connect your uh, phone uh, to calling your, your most favorite people. So we see that expanding to so be able to talk all of your uh, commands to, uh, to whether it be a computer or a video display screen or any other service you may be pulling information from in the future and basically replacing the touch tone dial pad. One of the problems with adopting voice recognition technology historically is the requirement for the caller to listen to the complete prompt and wait for the beep to say the response keying ahead on a keypad of a telephone was a lot faster and they didn't have to wait for the prompts. Today with the latest versions of the technology we can speak ahead like we are familiar with typing ahead on the keypad of a telephone. So that's uh, a, a big advancement in the, in the use of the technology. Uh, another aspect of voice uh, recognition technology is what we call voice verification and it's like a thumbprint but it's based on your spoken voice. That's a new emerging technology we're just starting to deploy so for password or security to add to a system, we can take a voice print of your voice so that when you call into the system, we can recognize it's in fact you. And that way, other people will not be able to get at your information. Greg, if I could just jump in. When I saw the movie Sneakers, there was one scene where they collected voice samples of the person whose password they wanted to get through. When you're putting your systems together, do you think that, that this would allow people to, to bypass security? Uh, it will. But the nature of the voice verification system is not just your voice print, but it's the speed of your voice and what you're saying. So in order to, to, to bypass the system, you would have to have an exact recording of me inputting my password. So I might speak 4575 Gregory Luke. If I had a voice recording that you had patched together of 4575 Gregory Luke, well, that would not be accepted because the pattern has been broken. If I say Gregory Luke with a more de determined pause, that also would not bypass the security system. So not only would you have to have pieced together recordings of my voice, but you'd have to know the pattern that I had used when I had recorded my password. As speech technology becomes more prevalent in society, I think you're going to find an awful lot of changes, almost to the point of Beam Me Up Scotty becoming a part of our regular everyday life. Speaking about regular everyday lives, we have our news all set for you. It's on our fax on demand system. So all you have to do is call from your telephone or fax machine to the first number on the screen. Remember, if you're out of the 416 area code, you should call from your fax machine, and that way the faxes will get back to you very quickly. Also, if you have any notes or thoughts about what you're doing with your computer system, don't be afraid to drop us a note to our fax mailbox. That's the second number on the screen, and all those letters eventually end up on my desk, so I'll find out more about what you're doing and your uses of technology. Coming up a bit later on, we're going to look at the world of printers on Computer Insider. Only sharp presentation systems deliver the winning combination. Don't miss your next opportunity. Get the sharp edge from a family of incredibly vivid computer projection panels to our convergence-free LCD projectors you too can have multimedia presentation power like never before. Up to 16 million colors in computer, video, or combined. Sharp presentation systems and you, the winning combination. Two days until the presentation. Plenty of time to pull it all together. Hi, Marcy. Sorry, the deadline moved up 24 hours. See you in the morning. Looks like a long night ahead. With her AST computer, she'll make it on time. AST Computers and Support for a winning performance.
from notebooks to super servers. AST Computer. You'll like the way we work. When John Nagy joined CompuServe, he was new at computing and an old hand on the mountain. He joined to get more out of his computer and more out of life. On CompuServe, as on the mountain, there was always something to discover. Like the solution to a software problem that wasn't in the manual. Or being one of the first to know about that special vacation spot and how to save time and money getting there. The mountain was a source of satisfaction he would never outgrow. In a way, a lot like CompuServe. For more information, call 1-800-554-4088. Start with the basics, news, travel, and encyclopedia, and more for just $8.95 a month. Then go beyond for free software and help with hardware and software problems. You'll get more out of your computer and more out of life. CompuServe, the information service you won't outgrow. One of the things we noticed recently while we were out working with our laptop was that it was working rather slowly and irregularly. So what I thought we'd do today is to use some utilities to look at the hard disk and see what's happening. For your reference, the monitor and the keyboard and the mouse we have here have been connected to our laptop in another studio. So what we're going to do is go into DOS and have a look at the laptop via Norton Utilities. What we wanted to find out is what is wrong with the computer. Basically, we noted, as we said before, that it's a little sluggish. So what we're going to do is go into Norton Utilities, which is a DOS-based program, and look at how we can analyze what's happening in the system. Now, this is an older version of Norton, first of all, Norton 7. And there's a whole raft of possibilities or utilities that we could use on the system. What I want to do is to go back up here to the top, or the second from the top one, which is called Norton Disk Doctor, and have it analyze the system. So we just want to click on that, thank you very much. We'll get another menu coming up. Now these are all of the things that you can do. Diagnose the disk, you can do a surface test, and other sorts of tests to find out what's happening within the system. Remember, we think there's a problem here, so we want the utilities to tell us what's going on within the computer itself. Uh, because this is a double space drive, it's asking us if we want to do the uh, host first, and we don't. So we've gone straight into checking our main hard disk system, which is our C drive. And it's now scanning our directories and performing some very routine tests. If a problem should uh, originate with the, with the structure of the disk, cross-link files or whatever, it's going to generate a great big red box, <laughs> just like this. And it tells us we have two errors on the system. And it's asking us what we want to do with these. Obviously, we want them corrected. Uh, we're going to skip over to the making of the uh, uh, delete disk or a save disk and go straight through to correcting the system itself. Once it's done its basic management, it comes back and tells us that it has found the errors and gives us a report on the entire structure. The other thing we're going to do when we're through with this is we're going to go over and do what they call an optimization of the disk itself. Basically, what an optimization is is that when you write files to and from a hard disk, it doesn't necessarily get them all in sequential order. Let's say you had a document you wrote to somebody a, a month ago. You bring it into memory of the computer and you add more information to that document and put it back. The new information might be in a different part of the hard disk entirely from where the main document is. So what we're going to do is we're going to use speed disk, which will be just down, just a little bit lower, please. Down. There we go. What we're going to do is use speed disk, which is going to go in, and it's going to look at all the file structure on the entire disk. And if you've never seen one of these packages, it's really quite interesting because it's going to show us a graphical picture. Take the hard disk, please. Thank you. It's going to give us a graphical picture of what the drive looks like in terms of data and whatnot. And then we'll have the ability to move those files around and line them up. Right now, it's going through some procedures. And there's what I was talking about. All of this information here is all data on the hard disk on our portable computer. It's checking to make sure that everything is intact and it's capable of doing the job. That's why we ran Norton Disk Doctor before we ran this particular program. If you have a computer, you should be using some sort of management utilities to look after your hard disk because there are going to be file problems. It's a certainty. So use the utility and save yourself the problem. Why don't we head back over to the studio now and talk about some of the technical aspects of this package. As we saw, there were some problems on the hard disk on the laptop computer, and we're going to let it continue to sort itself out. This is a procedure you should go through depending on how much you use your computer at least once a month and probably every week just to make sure that everything's working properly. Speaking about working properly, we have our fax on demand system all set for you with the latest computer industry news. 
That's the first number you see on the screen. Remember, if you're calling from outside the 416 area code, you should be calling from your fax machine. Coming up, we're going to be looking at some rather interesting aspects about printing because, as you know, we're supposed to be going into the paperless office, and it seems that we're becoming more like a paper-filled office. Steve Mozak joins us next on Computer Insider. Only sharp presentation systems deliver the winning combination. Don't miss your next opportunity. Get the sharp edge from a family of incredibly vivid computer projection panels to our convergence-free LCD projectors. You too can have multimedia presentation power like never before. Up to 16 million colors in computer, video, or combined sharp presentation systems and you, the winning combination. Today's marketplace demands more information delivered faster than ever before. D-Link helps make that happen. D-Link manufactures network interfaces. D-Link connects computer systems with bridges and routers. D-Link writes network management software. D-Link manufactures computer networking and internetworking products to bring this world closer together. D-Link Corporation. Computer Insider is brought to you by Maxell. Every Maxell computer product is 100% tested, certified, and guaranteed for life to ensure that your precious data will be completely safe. Maxell, always a generation ahead. When we look at our computer system, so often we think that this is the place to store electronically files or information that we've typed into the computer or downloaded from some location and that somehow will make that information available to share with other people electronically. Actually, we all thought we were heading into this paperless office environment. However, as we move through the 90s, that's not the way it's turning out. In fact, there seems to be more printing going on now than ever before. Today we're going to meet with Steve Mozak from Genicom Canada. And Steve, I was wondering if right off the top, could you tell us about what your customers are looking for in printers? To our clients, the, uh, the shopping list includes uh, such things like print quality, reliability, uh, particularly in the non-impact arena where you have higher dots per inch resolution uh, going to 600 and going higher uh, in, the, in the near future. But at the end of the day, it still uh, boils down to what the quality of the character is on the page the customer's printing in their particular application. It could be a multi-part form, it could be carbonless paper, and certainly uh, letterhead uh, as in a typical office application. When we start to look at the, the world of print companies, the Epsons, the Hewlett Packards, the QMSs and whatnot, whereabouts does Genicom fit in? Genicom has selected a number of vertical markets uh, to participate in. Uh, the, uh, the arenas that we are very strong in today is in the impact arena in terms of office automation product that are typically seen in, in large commercial uh, installations and also uh, very recently in the last couple of years very strong in the non-impact arena specifically again in commercial applications in the 10 page, 15 page, 17 page uh, marketplace. Steve, so often we've been hearing people talk about this so-called paperless office. Where is it? Is, is it actually going to come? The paperless office has been talked about uh, for a number of years. Uh, I believe the reality to most of our customers and our users are the fact that more paper is being created because of software, software applications, and therefore uh, the need for higher speed product, better print quality, and the uh, documents that they use in their everyday uh, business. Not so long ago, Steve, I was in Japan at the Japanese Electronics Show and we had an opportunity to see a lot of new devices coming into the marketplace. The trend seemed to be to have uh, appliances and whatnot that did many things, multiple appliance functions. Could you give us a comment on that, please? That is the, uh, the next wave of products uh, that, that are coming to the market where you incorporate printing, possibly faxing, imaging, uh, software packaging. Uh, where you actually produce, the printer becomes an output device that encompasses a number of other technologies. That clearly is the direction of the market. Way back in the beginning of the personal computer, Steve, it used to be just plug the printer into the back of your computer and away you went, but now we have peer-to-peer -peer networks, we have wide area networks. I mean, how, how has the world of networking changed the use of printers? Well, the, uh, the single one piece is uh, obviously network connectivity and uh, how one implements a network. Uh, a printer is a peripheral on a network that needs to be handled and administered as other components on the network. So the use of connectivity, connectivity software, and actually development pieces that are in the printers themselves that allow that to be very conducive for the user to use. 
specifically in the non-impact market, that is uh, the use of MIO connectivity, integrated uh, technology in the product that allows a laser printer to be used on a network environment, regardless of what the environment might be. Steve, when we, we look at the world of printing, there are so many different things going on, dot matrix and laser printers and whatnot. Could you give us a, a feel for how you see the market going and maybe what the standards for printers are? In the non-impact arena or in the laser arena, clearly the, uh, for the home uh, small business uh, user, a four to eight page a minute is the domain uh, uh, for that customer. Uh, and in the uh, uh, commercial applications, you're seeing non-impact speeds going, uh, going up. Uh, so uh, 10 page is today the, the norm. Uh, we clearly see 12 page becoming um, the next uh, wave and clearly 16 to 20 pages uh, probably in the next 12 to 18 months. There are also a number of products that are coming in the 20 to 30 page a minute range. So clearly our users are saying we need to go faster and since we're going faster we are producing more paper faster. Thank you very much, Steve. Steve Mozak is with Genicom Canada. If you'd like to get a copy of the latest pieces of information happening from the world of technology via our paper fax machines, all you have to do is call our fax on demand system. That's the first number you see on the screen. Every week we update the news for you so you can download it each and every week to stay abreast of what's happening in the world of high technology. Coming up, we're going to have a look at some of the better products from last year right here on Computer Insider. This top marketing executive prepares himself for the demands of today's business with his new sharp electronic organizer. He has accelerated to the top through careful planning and organization, but he doesn't keep it all in his head. Instead, his competitive advantage is at hand. Always with him, ready with the information most needed, and sometimes with what's needed most. Sharp Electronic Organizer. If you want to attract more business, you've got to work together. We all have our own special visions of where we want to be and how we want to work, wherever we are. At AST, we build computers to meet your worldview with award-winning products, service, and support. From notebooks to super servers, AST Computer, you'll like the way we work. When we look over the past year, there's a number of ideas or revelations that have come about for me in technology. Now, a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about may not have been released during 1994, but it impacted me during 1994. The highest area of impact for me was the fact that I switched from a 46 based machine to a Pentium-based machine. And that's made a tremendous difference in how I use computer technology. First of all, I have numbers of applications all running at the same time. It used to be that I have a spreadsheet or my word processor or some communications happening. Now I have them all happening at the same time. And admittedly, it gives me some interesting opportunities that I may not have otherwise planned for. But basically, my computer is much more functional for me and I'm able to do a much wider variety of things with the computer. Another hardware revelation for the past year was the Power PC. Not because the machine itself is a truly wonderful machine, but because it gives a lot more competition into the marketplace. When we have a number of serious contenders with different platforms all competing, down the road somewhere we're all going to benefit and come up with far better products. Another area that truly impacted what I was all about in 1994 was the ability to use Windows for workgroups, which basically allowed me to, at a very low cost, interconnect all my computers at home. Now I have my children sending me email and I'm able to use printers all over the household. What I wanted to find out by making the jump into peer-to-peer -peer networking was for a low dollar factor, can we put older machines to work? The answer back is yes. Of course, now I have to deal with the problems of how to keep the children out of my computer and all of the other things that go along with having multiple people share your equipment. Another area that I was truly happy with this year was third-party software, the shareware vendors, who were able to give me some rather unique utilities for my computer, things like Bonsai, which integrated my Word package with my Windows for Workgroups and whatnot. It's been a great year for technology, and I hope 95 will be good for you and for me. For Computer Insider, I'm Bob Pritchard. Computer Insider has been brought to you by AST Computer. You'll like the way we work. Sharp Electronics. From sharp minds come sharp products.